So that means, of course, Eddie, that you are the man we should talk to. Everybody is so excited about what Joe Schmidt can bring to Ireland. Are you as excited? Absolutely, yeah. I think, obviously, when Declan stepped on, he was the obvious guy to step in. and His progress with Leinster has been outstanding. And not just the fact they're a winning team, but the style of rugby they play. I guess with that brings a lot of expectation on his shoulders. And um, I guess the expectation is he'll have to get Ireland to play like he got Leinster to play, which is a big ask and a big task. But yeah, I think it's a very exciting time. Yeah, because it's so different, isn't it, being a provincial rugby, the different things I have even on a daily basis, being a provincial coach, being a national coach. Yeah, the timelines are the big thing. You know, you get very condensed blocks of time when you're in camp and international games, and then you get time away from the game. You spend a lot of time planning and strategising and trying to watch players. But for someone like Joe, who's a hands-on coach, um, he won't get his hands on the players as much as he'd like to. So that has ramifications in terms of you know, time on the field, uh, the type of game you can play and also for him I suppose making selections based on you know uh, very short timelines to make decisions um, so I, I think it's a very different world he knows that of course taking it on but certainly it's a big adjustment. Is there the fear Bernard that his his style and his type of coaching isn't actually going to suit international rugby? Um, it's obviously a gamble but uh, you know you'd have to say based on the evidence of what he's done with Claremont what he's done with Leinster, uh, the response every player who's worked on him you know, has about his, his knowledge, you know, his, his knowledge of the game is second to none. I know when he first arrived in Leinster, uh, the very first week they played Aroni, he'd just come from top 14 and he knew more about the Aroni players that, you know, the guys only played 30, 40 minutes the previous season, he knew every detail about them and that's what's infectious about him um, and his ability to communicate that message, you know, and uh, I think it's going to give it a, a real boost and, and there's a real good opportunity to put a stamp on his attack. You know, over the last couple of years we've all been critical of of Ireland's attacking game and uh, you know Leinster has been brilliant now is to try and bring that at an international level and he looks like he's all the tools he's kept his coaching staff small so he, he can and he's hands on he can have a, a real control over it and that's why it's exciting I suppose for November. And Eddie mentioned it there that is the challenge for him you know how does he adapt as a coach um, you know you mentioned as well about how good he is as, as, at that analysis so his own analysis of himself really how is he going to adapt how is he going to approach this get to know the players um, there's a huge amount of optimism. He was, he was, um, you know, everyone's choice for coach. So he goes in like, I suppose, with in in a good position. But you know, it's all about results at international rugby. So let's see you now what fresh approach Joe Joe Schmidt can bring. What new skill set? Because ultimately, it's it's still the same group of players that has been there for the last two or three years, bar a couple of guys. Um, so let's hope Joe Schmidt can work some of his magic. Well, let's pick up actually exactly on that. Is it all about results? Does he get a chance to make this the Ireland that he wants it to be? Yeah, I, I think you know we'd all forgive him during November if we saw you know really good performance, really good sh attacking shape, and somebody that we believe is going to help us into the Six Nations. We'd probably forgive him. He has those three games. You know, well, would you forgive him three defeats? Uh, yeah, it obviously wouldn't be ideal, you know, but. If there's a sign of actually what's starting to unfold, it's literally if we if we finish November without a clear uh, kind of plan from the outside that we can see exactly what Ireland he's, is trying to do. He's going to get time no matter yeah. what. It's Joe Schmidt. He's had that success. How much Everyone's time though, Alan? Well, you know, you're building for a World Cup. We were chatting about it earlier. You know, this, it's two years out from a World Cup. He needs some time to. You know, it's not going to happen straight away. I think Rob Carney mentioned the word patience last week. There has to be some level of patience from a a supporter's point of view, from the IRFU's point of view, they'll want instant success. That's what international rugby is about. You want to win games, you want to get that confidence back, you want to get rid of that lack of consistency that's been there the last couple of years. And I suppose you want to get the best out of the talent we have. I think one of the problems you have as Irish coach, which is, hasn't changed for anybody, is your opportunities to experiment and to, to change the team is very limited. Um, and it's even more limited for Joe because even most autumns you get a tier two nation thrown into the mix and you might have you know, Australia and maybe South Africa or whatever combination, but there's always a game there where you can experiment a little bit. And by and large, that's your only game. You know, the Six Nations is for experimenting, going to the Southern Hemisphere is for experimenting in the summer. So he doesn't even get that now. His first at bat is against Samoa, who are ranked above us. And that's their big game of their autumn. So he's going in at the deep end. So I think it's fair, yeah, he needs a bit of time to set out his stall, to get guys on board. But I suppose once the Six Nations kicks in, that's a, that's a benchmark for Ireland and it's a big tournament. It's very important in every sort of well, way for us. What's really critical, I think, for Joe Schmidt is to develop a backup, backup players. So I suppose build the depth of the squad, 
develop their skills. You know, we have a number of top-class international rugby players, but it's that depth we saw with the international, with the injuries last year. And that's what I'm looking forward to that's seeing. That's often Can your best chance, develop though, to get somebody in as somebody gets injured and you have to pick them in. Yeah, yeah. but I mean from a training point of view, yeah. as little time he has, he needs to really work with well, these the squad guys, sessions are good. change their philosophy, yeah. uh, kind of get his blueprint with those guys as well. And we, and we will chat in more detail about these specific matches that are coming up in Samoa a little later on in the show. But what will make a successful series? And does he need to start with a victory against a very, very strong Samoa team, which a lot of people, I don't think, realise? Yeah, I think people should take that into account. The Samoan team are coming here to beat Ireland and they've already beaten Australia uh, uh, earlier uh, last season. Um, this is their big game of their tour, so they're, they're here looking for a scalp. So it's going to be a tough game and we shouldn't underestimate that. But I think um, Joe will want to get off to a win, every coach does, but it's a tough one to get off to. The, and I think if they beat Samoa, they have to target Australia as well. Australia look very vulnerable at the moment. Um, you've got to think their, their confidence is on the floor. Um, so I think if you get two wins out of three it would be a very good return. I mean, to beat the All Blacks would be an extraordinary achievement in his third game and, and I think I was expecting that. But I think, again, we'd like to see Ireland competing, looking like they know what they're doing, whatever happens. So I think two out of three is acceptable, uh, but it's going to be tough. It won't be easy, that's for they, sure. They are going to be very difficult and to pick you up on the Samoan, Samoan team, they have, they're playing France and Georgia after this. This is their big match. They're, they're really unhappy that the IRB haven't given them more internationals, higher quality internationals. They're rated higher than Ireland, so it's going to be a huge challenge. Okay, and it